No, thanks. Thanks very much, Daze. Um, yeah, I'm still recovering from the last time you spoke, so I'm glad it was a little uh, short of that time, but um, feelings very uh, mutual. But um, yeah, thanks everyone for coming tonight. Uh, Daze, you spoke so well then. There's, there's just that little feeling in your gut that um, obviously it's been a quick turnaround since Saturday's game and uh, the amount of work that goes into it from the players, from family, from a club perspective to get to that point. Uh, and then to just fall short, obviously tonight is a great opportunity to celebrate the, the season we had, but then uh, yeah, you're still, still coming to terms with uh, just fell short and then you know what it's going to take to give ourselves that opportunity again. But that time will come for work and that's not, that's not now, that's not tonight. Um, it's a great opportunity to celebrate what's, uh, what we built. Um, and for a lot of us, it, it started you know, at the last best and fairest night and, and starting to think like Daisy was thinking about how fit and strong we can get and what are our opportunities during COVID to improve and um, that's where that opportunity was created, you know, out, um, out on goshes during lockdown or um, at your local ovals, um, in your garage, pumping weights with whatever weights you could get a hold of. Um, so there's a lot of sacrifices made from the players to give ourselves a chance last season and, and well done to you for, for creating that opportunity. Uh, I just wanted to start it. Dave's covered a lot of it, so it means I can be even shorter. But I just wanted to ask the staff of our AFLW program just to stand up where you are, please. If you're not sure, just ask the person next to you. They'll be able to give you a good reference point. Uh, Daisy said it really well. And from a personal point of view, uh, the acknowledgement and some of the attention that I've had in the last week or so um, obviously doesn't sit that well with me because I see um, I'm just a, you know, a reflection of, of our group and any accolades that I received in recent times is off the back of our work um, as staff within this program. Uh, we have such a brilliant group of staff that are, that are dedicated and committed. Uh, they don't do it for financial reasons. They do it because they love it and their joy comes from watching our players develop and grow on and off the field. Uh, and I'm really grateful to be able to work with such dedicated and committed people that bring a lot of humour and, uh, and joy to each other's lives. And I think this group perfectly complements an amazing group of women. And it's, it is just a, a really enjoyable experience. And I guess we're all passionate about footy and we're all competitors, so we've got a lot in common. But um, from a club perspective, uh, I just wanted to say thank you to all our staff for all the hours you put in um, and, to the, and to your families as well particularly the ones with young kids. It's, it's a lifestyle, it's an all-in commitment. You don't just come and go from work. Um, you're on the phone constantly. And um, no, truly thank you and appreciate everything you've given up. Um, it was definitely worth it and uh, it'll be worth it again in a couple of months' time. So thank you all. <laughs> you forgot to stand up, Reid, but uh, appreciate you. Um, and in terms of our staff, I will say, yeah, obviously it's, it's the person first, get the right people and then their skill set on top of that. So to a certain extent, um, players, just so you're aware, Saren's not actually a doctor, he's just a really good guy. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's been nice having him involved. Uh, from the, to Kate and the board, uh, Purdy and Chip, um, George, who's here tonight, just... For your commitment to our women's program, um, we want to be a high-performing team. We want to pursue that excellence um, for you to give us that opportunity and, and support our program and, and truly felt the, the strength and might of, uh, of this great club behind us um, in this campaign. And, and that was during some challenges during COVID as well. So I'm really grateful for the whole support of the club and to be able to build this program to where it is now and then give us an opportunity to leverage off that and, and go even further. And like the um, introduction of WAGS into your role, the passion and uh, I guess the excellence um, that you've brought, uh, any opportunity you've seen to enhance the program, you've taken it. Um, Jesse and Todd, uh, as part of that leadership team, the work that goes in behind the scenes, these guys just don't stop thinking about how can we get better? How can we provide the best possible environment for the players? Uh, so yeah, from my perspective and probably on behalf of, of everyone else involved, thank you for your leadership and thanks to the club for, for making our women's program as, as, good as good as it can possibly be and we'll be ready to go even better next season. So thank you.
Uh, Megan's done a great job of, of recapping uh, this season. I just wanted to go through it with a few images. Uh, won't take me long, and I'm sure you want to know who wins the best and fairest, so bear with me. Um, we started by conquering Mount Buffalo. Uh, it was a different experience for everyone. Uh, Jordan and Brooke would probably like to have their time again. They got lost at some point. Um, Georgia Campbell now knows all of the Arnold Schwarzenegger movies from hanging out with Pete and John Stanier going up the mountain. But uh, probably the best thing about the experience being in Bright uh, was being in Daisy's backyard and the beauty of the scenery and um, just being, in, as a group, being able to experience why she loves Bright and her hometown and um, have her family near, near, uh, with us as well. So that was something that was quite special to our team. And so Daisy and Ben, thanks for sharing Bright with us. Um, but yeah, that, that's really where we sort of launched our campaign. Uh, we then moved into, on the eve of round one, we welcomed the Chaplin family. So Maeve, another welcome for you. Um, Izzy, Izzy Simmons suffered a, a stress fracture just on the eve of the season and, and that gave Maeve an opportunity that, uh, that she took. Um, so you kind of missed out on all the, uh, the season launch and the normal introduction of the team, but um, really pleased to have Maeve involved. Wasn't the normal start to your football career. She took the first weeks off, first two weeks off with, uh, with COVID, but then uh, um, is a much loved member of the team now. So very grateful to have Maeve. We jumped in around one, uh, at Witten Oval and four debutantes. So we got off to a great start. Round two, oh sorry, quickly, I've skipped a couple here, but Round three, first time we've had a pride jumper, which was designed by Tegan Cunningham. So that was a great step forward for us. Yeah. Round four, we'll leave. Uh, Bano, just at Richmond, this is obviously the bull and the pyramid. I won't talk too much about it tonight. We'll leave that in the past. Um, Daisy had some confusion where it was a, a diamond. Um, <laughs> they'll probably discuss that later on. But uh, that was a special night at Richmond. Uh, I think you've seen the, the goal of the year nomination from Bano, but just even just talking to people about the excitement of watching women's footy, and, and Bano, you've been involved in a few highlights, but uh, I think it's a representative of the team and the skill and the speed and the execution that this group of women is capable of. Uh, it brings a lot of people a lot of joy, and especially you know, the coaches and the staff that get to sit, sit back and enjoy it every week but you're having a significant impact on, on everyone in the community. Um, young, old, just really appreciating how good you are at, at your craft and what you do. So um, I've had a lot of positive commentary throughout the season about you know, where the skill level and execution has gone. And um, I certainly understand where that starts. It doesn't just happen, so um, well done. Uh, we then had round seven against the Lions and other two debutantes, so Liv Purcell and, and Talia Gillard. Um, it was a come from behind win and a, and a really memorable night. Uh, the trip to Frio, uh, our connection was that good, we didn't even have to look at each other when we were giving high tens. Um, <laughs> really good flow that night. Uh, the people of Perth are still wondering who Bots is. Um, bots is the best opportunity to score. So when you're going in the forward line, what's our best opportunity to score? And um, got shortened into Bots and pretty much every second word from the players on that night was bots and it sort of it flowed with how the game unfolded. Everyone got an opportunity um, and days I think it, uh, yeah, you referenced it a few times, but um, it's certainly something we probably needed a little bit of on grand final day, but it'll only improve in our team and uh, it certainly worked for us that night. Uh, Libby Birch's milestone, so doing what she does best, defending in this photo. Um, it, was a, it was a tough night at Casey. Really tough night, would have, been, would have been an easy one just to roll over and it's too hard, but the team really dug the heels in and, and found a way to win, which is something we've failed in the past. Uh, so some significant growth as a team there and, and something we'll, um, we'll continue to take forward in the next few seasons. Fast forward to the preliminary final, the opportunity to play on the MCG, what an amazing experience. Um, I can give you a little insight now because it's in the past, but. Uh, AFL first approached us, what would your preference be uh, to play the prelim? Like, would that be at Casey or at the G? Uh, and our leadership team wanted to play at, the, uh, at Casey if they had a preference. Um, it was a very tough decision. I think Kate Hornelli cried when she actually said those words out of her mouth. But the reason 
um, from the leaders was they wanted the best opportunity to win. Like, we're going into a prelim to win a game of footy to give ourselves the chance to win a grand final. And Casey at that point, we'd won 13 games in a row. Um, opposition teams already defeated when they step out on the, uh, on the ground and we see that as a great advantage. Um, so that gives you an insight into where the team's at. They're not in it for the glory or you know, the, um, the experience. Uh, they want to win games of footy and they want to be taken seriously. And obviously as things unfolded, um, a club speaking with the AFL, the opportunity to play here at the MCG, um, that decision was then made and taken out of our hands, which, which we think was the, the best possible outcome in the, in the end. Um, and it was what was best for the club and, and women's footy. So, and obviously you only need to see the game that unfolded out here, the passion that was on display, the intensity, the relentlessness of our team, um, and then just the memories that'll be created, like shared with family after the game. Um, yeah, the first ever AFLW team to, to win a game of footy on the MCG, that can't ever be taken away from us, so well done. And yeah, Paxi getting chaired off might be a new tradition. Lib, we might have to chair you off later to make up for your one at Casey. But, um... And then to the weekend, yeah, still, still processing it and quite haven't, quite, haven't quite watched the whole game back. But we were ready, um, really pleased with the staff and the players. We went to that game mentally ready. We've had a lot of growth, growth mentally as a group. Um, and being able to step up on the big occasions and not fearing anyone and really believing in ourselves. So really proud of how we, we approached that game, um, how to, proud of how we showed up. Uh, there's certainly some, some moments that we, we just missed, uh, but that's, that's footy, unfortunately. And uh, I think there's some clear takeaways from that game. And you can probably take it away now, Em. I'll be uh, offending a few players leaving it up. But some key takeaways is that, that our game style stands up in finals. Um, your roles and your strengths stand up in finals. So what we've built and what we've created, while we didn't get reward for effort with a nice cup to be able to bring back and share with everyone, what we did get rewarded with was belief as a group. And I spoke about it after the game, but you, no one can hand that to you. Lisa Hardiman can't give you belief at the end of the game. Um, you've got to earn it yourself. And it, that starts at those COVID lockdown sessions in the gym or um, Daisy recovering from a um, knee surgery at Warren Ponds Oval um, out just down the outskirts of Geelong in the pouring rain in the middle of the July, um, just powering through just before she had a media commitment. Like that's, that's where belief starts. It starts by doing the hard work and everyone did their little bit. And when we came together in September and, and built through just the momentum kept coming and uh, to not lose you know, any close games of, you know, during the season where it could have gone either way, there's more belief being built again. And yes, there is parts of our, our game style and um, parts of our game we can improve, obviously, but what we've created works. Um, and we're now we've got a, a group of, of women that truly believe in themselves and each other. And I know we'll be doing everything we can to create ourselves another opportunity um, to get to another grand final. And then uh, we'll rewrite the script uh, at the end of the year when we get that opportunity to play again. But one thing I think this group has really learnt is you don't deserve, like, you don't get what you deserve. Like, just because we had a good year, we've got great people, we've got great players, you don't get given the win, you don't get given a grand final. You, you've got to earn every opportunity. And um, I think that's important to understand now. Like, enjoy this next period of time together. Um, have that time away from footy because you desperately need it and it's important to have that balance. But to get to where we want to get to, you've got to be prepared to roll up the sleeves. You've got to be prepared, the dis dis discretionary effort, you're better at saying that than I, Kate. Um, you've got to be prepared to do all those little things and do them better than you did last time. Because the competition's going to go up again, where the players go here, there, what that looks like, that's not in our control, but the standard's going to go up again. Players are already going to be working behind the scenes Teams have already been finished for four or five weeks. They've already got a head start on us. So as Daisy said, we don't just roll out, roll out next season and go, yep, we're going to get another grand final and I'm just going to do something that little bit more special on grand final day that'll get us over the line. Definitely doesn't work that way. Um, the hard work is ahead of us, but because of what we've created and what we've built, we do have a head start on other teams with that belief. 
right? but we have to be prepared to do the hard work if we want to get that, other oppo- get that next opportunity this season. And, and that's the blessing with uh, the season coming forward. Like you've, you've created such momentum, now we just get a little bit of time to reconnect with our family, invest in our jobs, um, catch up on study, um, and it re-energise, but that momentum will then give us a really good starting point for next season. But um, to the players, I've probably given you a little bit of a rev up there, but um, thanks so much for the time and effort that you've put in. It's a program that demands a lot. Like we, we pride ourselves on being professional. We provide ourselves, pride ourselves on being a high-performing team. And in, in return, we ask a lot of you of players, um, whether that's you know, sacrifices in your social life, whether that's extra sessions, um, extra medical treatment and all those little things. So I don't, don't say that lightly. We really appreciate uh, the time, energy and effort you put in um, to make this program what it is. Um, it certainly wouldn't be where it is without, without your input. So um, congratulations on the season you had. I know it's not what we wanted right at the end of it, but can't take the hard work that you put in uh, and that's only going to hold us in good stead as we continue to move forward. So um, thank you on behalf of the coaches and staff. We, we love working together. You all bring great energy to the club. We get so much joy out of watching you play um, and it really is a special place. And um, yeah, we, we love the relationships that have been built and the genuine care you have for us as people and our families. Um, you're really special people. So thank you very much.